This is not how I planned this. This is uh, this is a big announcement, well, part of it. I was waiting for this to be done, and I had a couple eye surgeries. I wanted to keep that part of my life private, and that's why I wasn't on camera. I was trying to hide my eye looked pretty gnarly after the surgeries, and it's still getting better. So I was planning on coming back when the time was right and the set was right, and I could um, get back to my old self. Unfortunately, uh, a couple of days ago, an article came out where some pretty horrible things were said, and I felt the need to address them because my name was in the article and I'm associated with these horrible, horrible acts and I am completely 100% innocent. I spoke to a reporter before that article was published just to clear my name, just because I felt I had no guilt and not, you know, everyone advised me not to talk to reporters because they'll twist your words and even in my past experience with getting arrested, they'll always tell you do not say anything because you'll incriminate yourself and you only make things worse and you are innocent until proven guilty but in the internet world I feel like you're guilty until proven innocent so if I sit here and stay quiet and try to solve this over tweets I'm just going to screw up more and look like more of an idiot because you guys can't see my face one and two I am pretty bad at explaining myself so I'll probably fuck up a lot here and I'll probably be picked apart but I don't care. I'm just going to do it because I have nothing to hide. I'm completely innocent, and what the what was said about me was false. Before anything, my heart goes out to the victim, and this video is not to discredit her. What Dom did was horrible and disgusting. It makes me sick, and I had no idea about this until this article was published. Well, technically, I got reached out to to comment on it, and nobody really knew what happened that night until that article was sent out to us. And I chose to comment on it. I chose to comment on it because some things that were said about me were completely false. I'm sitting here watching these videos where they're dissecting the article and the video itself and the actions that happened that night. And I am mad at myself because of the way I look. I, I genuinely am upset with myself. And I know that I, I didn't do what they're saying that I did, but the way it looks... I can understand why people are pissed off, and I just want to explain that. And by doing that, I have to explain how David's vlogs work. It's kind of like uh, a chaotic, shittier version of SNL. David will come up with ideas himself, but since he would have to put out so much content, other people will pitch ideas, and sometimes he'll like them, and sometimes he'll shoot them, sometimes he'll scrap them, we won't use them. Um, sometimes you get to do your funny joke that you did in his video, which is the biggest platform. And that's great because then you get more attention to your channel and, and whatever. And, and you can maybe get more possibilities from that bit that you executed in, in his video. So on this day, three years ago, um, Dom had posted an Instagram story where he was asking to have a foursome. He was asking who would, who would be interested in having a, a foursome with him. We got wind of this, and it seemed like an interesting bit that possibly, you know, potentially something funny could come out of. Back when I was rolling with David and we, we would film these vlogs, it was very, like, chaotic. We'd bounce around. We'd be in one spot for 15 minutes. We'd shoot back to the fucking In-N-Out parking lot and see if we could find something there. We would go to Hollywood Boulevard. We would go to J David's house or wherever, and we just keep trying to find jokes. And this situation this night is not how it played out in the video. Because you guys only see a small, small part of it. Sometimes jokes don't land. Sometimes shots don't work. Sometimes audio isn't clean. Sometimes somebody says a joke, it doesn't happen on camera. We have to redo it. Sometimes things are scripted entirely. I and David and we all were under the impression that this was a consensual bit. These girls had answered Dom's message to have a threesome and they came over to do that or maybe pretend to do that or joke around or just maybe nothing was going to happen. Who knows? According to the article and in the video, maybe five or six girls showed up. They weren't interested in having the threesome. I think they just wanted to hang out and film. Maybe some of them were or I don't know exactly. I, I remember some of them saying that they were 
some were 20, some were 21. But in the article, it says that Trisha, who was Jason's girlfriend at the time and the one bringing all this to light, she is saying that I supplied alcohol to loosen up the girls, which it just it just makes me angry because it's so not true. I willingly called Insider to clear my name and say this is complete bullshit. Trisha and I have had, you know, we haven't been so friendly with each other in the past because of the breakup with Jason. My loyalty remained with Jason after the breakup. I saw Trisha make videos on Jason and she was angry at him for whatever reasons. That's between them. I reached out to Trisha personally after all this and I mean, I, I only knew one side of the story at the time. I only knew what she was saying online and he was losing jobs, losing money, he was getting hate. To me, in my eyes at the time, it was taking food out of his kid's mouth. So however much attached my name is to this, it's just because I was the only one to speak. I talked to the reporter and I told her that I had nothing to do with buying the alcohol. It absolutely was not me. I will go down to that liquor store and I will dig for those tapes for, from three years ago to see who walked in the liquor store. I check my credit card statement. I don't know how you how you prove that you didn't buy alcohol. The only one that was allegedly saying that I bought the alcohol was Trisha. Trisha wasn't even there when the alcohol supposedly arrived. I told Trisha, who I had problems with at the time, I apologize for discrediting everything you say because of my loyalty to a friend. What would you do if your friend broke up with her boyfriend and there was some problems going on between them? You would stick with your homegirl. That's it. That's just that that was my problem. And that's why I had a beef with Trisha. You know, that's why my name is in this article, I believe. For the first time, I talked to the reporter from Insider. I told her that I 100% didn't buy the alcohol. I swear to God, I swear on everything. I definitely did not. I'm sober. I would not. I haven't. I, I know I haven't bought alcohol because I quit drinking. So I just, there's no way I could have bought the alcohol. Then she asked me about a joke that I made with Todd in a video where I made fun of his drinking problem and like how he loves whiskey or something like that. I do make those jokes about Todd. So I said, yeah, you know, that that could have been in a video later, years later in a completely different situation. But I wasn't saying Todd bought the alcohol. That was like 20 minutes apart in our phone call. So for you to put those two together, it pissed me off because now you're making me look like I'm throwing my friend under the bus here and saying that Todd was the one who supplied this alcohol to loosen girls up. I've never given a girl a drink to loosen girls up in my life. It just sucks because all you need to do is say something on the internet and then it's a story and then it's it's this is a liter literal published article with a paywall in front of it you have to pay to read it and the girl said to me i don't know what video you said that in but i didn't have much to work with and that's what i think trisha said to me or something so that's what i had to go with you're the only one that spoke to me what vlog or barbershop episode did i reference that todd likes whiskey I don't know because I know Trisha has like brought that up, but I was just like told that there was a clip of you and Todd talking about the alcohol. So for me reaching out, that's why my name is in this article and that's why I'm associated with this. Back to explaining how David films, we do stuff that sometimes doesn't work and that bit in our eyes, all of our eyes, it was a failure. It didn't work out and... We all left thinking it didn't work out. We peeked in the room. We were like, oh, they went in the room with him. But nobody's clothes were taken off. No, Nobody was kissing. There was nothing going on. We were just joking around. And then we left straight up. We left. We went somewhere else to film something else. In the video, it looks like we were peeking in. And in the article, it says that the friends had to lift her limp body out of the room because she drank so much alcohol. That was supplied allegedly by me or Todd. And that sounds absolutely horrible, and I won't stay silent on this. I don't give a fuck how this gets picked apart. But I would never look into a room and see a limp girl being <laughs> and allow that to happen. I made a joke in a video one time with David and Dom where he said, you guys will both end up in jail together. And I said, no, they separate the the rapists and the pedophiles and stuff like that. They they separate those guys and they put them in different color outfits and they give them special security because they get beat down and they get killed. 
because of what they do when you're in jail and you're a rapist. That's what happens to you. They give you the light, the light blue jumpsuit and the rest of us would be in dark blue. Look, I, I, I've fucked up before in the past. I've made mistakes. I've addressed them. They're on the internet. You could read through every one of them and I'll admit to them. If I did something wrong, I'll admit to it. This was all nearly a decade ago and I have nothing to hide now. Look, I referenced jail a lot and it's become a part of my character, I guess. And I haven't been there in 10 years, but what I can say is it's, it's a horrible place. It's where nobody would ever want to be. The second you get there, especially in California, you have to fight. And even the most hardened criminals, even the worst people on the planet that, are, that have to be locked in a cage because they can't be out in society, still do not condone rape and sexual assault and pedophiles. I don't stand for any of that shit. Dom is going to get what's coming to him. I've been reaching out to him because he needs to address this because since I'm the only one who will talk, I'm the one that's getting the most shit. And... I called Dom several times a day. Uh, I've been texting him, and he said, stop calling me. And I said, it doesn't work like that. I'll just fucking read it, because, I, I mean, who gives a fuck? I'm an open book. I got nothing to hide. He said, on a call, bro, stop calling me. I said, he, I said stop calling you. It doesn't work like that. I, I ended it off with saying, you better hope the cops find you before I do. I mean, I don't even know what I would do. This video and this whole situation makes me sick. I and mean, the poor girl has to live with this. I just want you guys to know that I would never just sit back and watch a girl get fucking I would never sit there and let that happen. Ever. You know, the video's being picked apart, lined up with the article, and it looks bad. I, I'm mad at myself when I watch it. You know, I have a sister, I have nieces, I have respect for all women. But back to how David vlogs, it's obvious that, you know, things are scripted and set up and reshot. I've said that already, but there is a clip at the end of the video and it's with Dom with a shirt off, and he's fucking sweating. That shot was not even shot that day. And I know people will probably take this clip right now of me saying this, and everything said is a statement, and everybody's story needs to match up, and you can take this, and you can use this in court. This is my statement. I'll fucking stand on the stand and say, say this again. I was not there. David went back the next day to shoot that sweaty scene. They literally sprayed him to make him look sweaty and make it look like he just finished having sex. To my understanding, that was shot the next day. And to my understanding, David had no idea that Dom had just the girl that night before when he told him that he successfully had the threesome so they can finish the bit. They have the ending to their story. What happened, I had no idea about. I could speak for myself. In my opinion, David went into that thinking that this was a consensual bit and it was funny to him at the time when he was 21, 20, you know, I guess his friends out here that he, they moved out here from Vernon Hills together and he's able to have a threesome from putting out an Instagram story. It was cool to him. I don't control the, what, what goes in the videos. It was cool to him at the time. The joke that was made at the end of the video saying that we should, We'll probably all go to jail for this was a complete joke and a terrible one at that because it turned out something horrible actually happened that night. But do you think it, in anyone's right mind, if we just posted a video to 10 million people that a serious, disgusting crime happened in, we would make a joke saying we're going to go to jail for this? I didn't make the joke. I didn't know what happened. I just think people, if they're innocent, they should talk. I woke up today to a call from my manager where I was asked to delete all the posts that I've done with a brand that I've been partnered with for a while. And I felt like angry at first and, you know, disappointed. I didn't feel guilty. I felt like this is now costing me everything I've worked for. I refused to delete it. And he said they could sue you. And I said, you know what? Then fuck it. Let him sue me. I'm innocent, and I know how this looks from a PR standpoint, but I will speak up, and I will show that I'm not who these people are saying I am. Removing those those posts the, the, from those partnerships, it looks like I'm admitting guilt. And I, I know he's saying that it's a PR thing, like if your name is in titles and you're speaking on stuff, you're linked to this. But I'm fucking innocent. I didn't assault a girl. I didn't... I wasn't an accomplice to an assault. I tagged along to make a, a skit, to make a consensual bit. I'm not trying to defend anybody here. 
I'm just trying to tell the truth. And I'm not media trained. I, I probably fucked up a bunch of times. I mean, I talked to Trisha and I... I mean, that was a lot to call her after she said some, you know, pretty crazy stuff about me. Um, but I always feel like communication should be done offline. And I'm always quick to call and talk things out without them blowing up online so everybody else has their two cents in without knowing the whole story. And I called Trisha and I immediately apologized for the Starbucks situation. She's allowed to have an opinion. The fucking hard-headed New Yorker in me, the loyalty to my friend, is what got me into a beef. I mean, this allegation in here could potentially ruin my life and career and everything I worked for. This article currently cost me every partnership I've worked my entire life to build. And it's all just because I was trying to help by telling the reporter the truth. I asked the reporter if she was sorry for twisting my words and causing all this now because um, I'm sure she had a, an idea about you know, what, would, what the aftermath of this would be, but um, I just wanted to know if she had any any sort of sympathy for, you know, knowing that I was innocent and still doing this. And I even have her saying to me on the phone that she believes me that I'm innocent, but she still went ahead and twisted my words. So, fuck it. I'll put the video in. Jeff, I am, I am very, very sorry to hear that. Like, I feel like you were more of an innocent, well, I feel like you were more of a bystander in the overall conflict, and I am very sorry that that is headed your way. I don't think that anything else is going to come out that will, like, involve you specifically, because... Are you sorry to hear I mean, it, or are you sorry that, like, you wrote, you worded it that way, though? Like, it, it sounds like, like... I mean, I'm sorry to hear it, because ultimately, like, I had to do that for my job. Like, that's just, like, what I had with the information that I was presented with. But I am sorry to hear that. Don't paint me like I'm a piece of shit because all I got to do is release the rest of this phone call. And, you know, I'm not trying to get people fired. That's not my goal. I understand you're trying to get a story out about a, a serious crime that was done to a girl. And I support that. But what you did was not do good research. And you brought down a lot of innocent people along the way. And you put a paywall on it. You claim you're helping the girl. You know, you claim you're helping the girl by getting her story out there. But why put a paywall on it? Why make people pay to read it, sign up to Insider? It's for your own personal profit. You said it. It's my job. I had nothing to work with and you're the only one that spoke to me. That's the only reason I'm in this mess. And that's the only reason I am dealing with what I'm dealing with now. And losing partnerships that me and my team work to build... You know, I'm not the only one that works on my videos. I have, I think, about 10 employees now on payroll that rely on me to eat. And I rely on brand partnerships to be able to put videos out for free. And it's all ruined now because of this fucking article that you put my name in when I have no guilt in it whatsoever. It's a fucking reporter. Put her, put her fucking Twitter up. Acting like you're doing the Lord's work. Don't act like you're doing the Lord's work. You're, you're doing this for profit. Again, I've said this a hundred times. This video is not to discredit the victim. But if it's such a serious story, get the facts straight. This is a criminal case now. Get the facts straight. Don't just throw around, oh, this person might have done this because Trisha said this. Here we go. Here's another article from Insider. Five of the best organizations that help survivors of sex assault. Now, April is sex Assault Awareness Month and Prevention Month. So, there you go. Go hunt down the bad guys next month. Goddamn Insider always wants you to sign up or pay for something. They're going to slander me again, man. Here we go. April is Sex Assault Awareness Month, also referred to as Sex Assault Awareness and Prevention Month across the nation. If you or someone you know has experienced sexual abuse or you want to learn about how you can support survivors learning about these programs and organizations, this can be a useful place to start. Okay, Insider, I know you fucked me, and you published shit that was not true about me, but I'm going to link your article here in my description. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. We're going to put this article down here for anybody that is a victim or knows a victim or is dealing with any assault problems. Yeah, I guess just to wrap it up, 
my heart goes out to the victim. This video is not to discredit her whatsoever. Uh, the report, the only thing I just wanted to do was clear my name. I tried speaking up from the beginning because I, f I know I'm innocent. Just so you guys know, moving forward in the future, I, I like to keep some things private, but in this case I couldn't because I just wouldn't be able to sleep at night. But I'll, I'll get to everything else with me and my personal life. I'll be a little more open and we'll see how this goes over. Uh, I'll be a little more real with you guys. I know a lot of my videos are really hard to understand and it's weird humor a lot of real shit mixed in with scripted stuff and I think this podcast will be good for me to uh just talk about real shit once in a while and yeah I'm still new to this game so give me some time but we'll we'll work on it all right I know this video is going to get a lot of clicks from other people that are here just to pick me apart but it's also going to be watched by a lot of my own supporters who know me and they know my character and they know I would never stand for any of that they know I respect women I talked to them throughout this and majority of my supporters are women and they've stayed supporting me through this and I know I'm a small detail in this story but it's enough just to be linked with the story and that's enough to get called a, a pedophile and shit like that and all these horrible things. It's just the internet. But I thank my, my own supporters and these, these uh, people that are still standing by me and posting edits and stuff like that. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Makes everything, you know, it makes me still want to do this for a living. All right, we're good. We're done.